Hey there everyone and welcome back to more Zelda 1 Second Quest. In the last part we finished up level 6 and now we're standing in front of level 7. I made sure that I was fully healed up. So let's go into level 7. Oh hey look a compass that was easy. Alright anyway um, this dungeon in terms of design and such is actually well it looks pretty simple but it's actually not it's actually pretty hard okay so there's basically a treasure that I, that we have to get and to get it we have to go into one more room towards the right also hooray for orange bubbles yet again Okay, this is the room where we need to make staircase, a staircase appear. So that means we have to kill all of these guys. Also, I'm getting stuck in this current situation. Yeah. This dungeon is pretty hard, but there are no whiz ropes in it, surprisingly. So, how does that make it hard? Well... Sons of Dark Nuts, that's pretty much it. And I guess the boss is tough too. Okay, now you die. Come on, just die. Come on, you're dead already, so just die. I'm trying to press A. Okay, so this will lead us clo pretty close to the treasure. The treasure is basically the rat candle, which is kind of useless, but oh well. We'll just get it. First we have to kill these guys and then we can get to the treasure. Alright, and here we go. Now for us to continue, we need to pretty much just go back and uh, then just continue from where we made the first staircase appear. Because pre pretty much if, like once you start doing that again, you just go straight to one room towards another. There are like no branching paths whatsoever. Like there, there are no, there are no, um, there are no doors to like the side or something. It's only just that staircase I just went down. There are actually a bunch of staircases, and I think half of them are useless. I think there are like nine different staircases. I think so. So yeah, now we just go, just advance and just keep going until we can't go anymore. Well, you know, until we have to do something else. Alright, just die. Thank you. I would have preferred to not take a hit there as he died, but oh well. Hey, well, at least this gives us a good, good opportunity to test the red candle, since I don't think I did that yet. Not that that's really very entertaining, but, you know. At least now you know what it looks like. And these orange bubbles are not trying to make me progress. Okay, wait, what, look, I want that heart. I want to be at full health so I can throw my sword. Okay, this is why this dungeon is hard, because you have dark nuts, blue dark nuts combined with fireball statues, and it's just really annoying. And kind of difficult too. I mean, dark nuts for itself are not too bad, but the fact that there are so many of them, plus fireballs, 
you know, when you start taking hits, you start taking a lot of them. Oh, oh, yep, yeah. oh, there we go, chain of hits. But then actually from the fireballs and that from the dark nut. Oh, and that was a blue ruby, by the way, it wasn't very clear, but that's what it was. And we got a blue Goma. Go ahead and kill him. And yet again, using that one strategy where I just go along the bottom of the room. And dang it, I was too late. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, that's kind of weird. Like, if I hit him from the right side of the eye, it doesn't hit. But from the left side, it does. That's just weird. Okay, so here we can't go further anymore. So, time for a staircase. Right over here. And now we're just gonna go through here if the dark nuts are going to go away okay this dungeon actually has two old uh, has actually two old men that can can take away your heart container and um you can basically go three ways from here if you push the block if you want to go up you have to actually leave the room and then come back and then push the block from here because it resets but going going left here is no is no use so don't do it Going up leads to an old man that lets you force that will force you to either give up a heart container or 50 rupees. And this one does the same. However, I can actually skip one of them, and that's the one right there. So I have to go through this one. This one, this room, I have to go through. And you can see that the door above is actually open, but I need the bottom one to be open to actually get to the end of the dungeon. So yeah. Now we got blue dark nuts in close quarters, that's kind of bad. At least it's not as cheap as, you know, those that they're like literally in one block passageways, because that's just dumb. At least here you have a little bit, just a little bit of room to avoid them. If you don't do it, kind of a not so good job of it. Okay. Staircase. And this will pretty much lead us to the end of the dungeon. From there it's just a, a straight stretch to the end. But it's not going to be easy, I'll tell you that. Oh, well, okay. I really cannot get hit by orange bubbles because the boss... The only way to hit the boss is with the sword. Because it's a Gliok. So I have to get my sword back. And hopefully I don't get it. There are like so many enemies in here, so the odds of me actually hitting the blue bubble is like very slim. Of course when I'm actually trying, I'll just get hit by an orange one. As you can see. Okay, well at least I got my sword back. I think also when you get to the Goliath, you're locked inside, so... Like if that were to happen, you're fucked. <laughs> okay, here we have another tough room with dark nuts and fireballs everywhere. From every corner, literally. Yeah. Okay. Ooh! Fairy! Fairy! Woo! I'm actually at full health. Oh my god, that's awesome. Now if we can only stay that way. Okay, Gliok should be easy now. He has four heads, actually. And if you are... Like, at this point, you sh sh should be at low health, but... And if you are, this boss is hard, like really hard, because there are so many heads. But the magical sword doesn't make it a ton, uh, a big ton easier. So I did actually not expect to actually get through this dungeon unscathed, or at least make it through without dying. So what can I say? I was lucky. I was just very, very lucky. Alright, so now... 
Um, we have to go to level 8, but the thing is we actually need bait for it, because in level 8 is a hungry moblin guy. So that means we need 60 rupees, but I'm pretty close to 60 rupees, so I guess I'll just get some rupees while I'm going on the way to it. A potion would probably help too, but I guess I will wait until level 9. Like if I can get that many rupees by that time. Yeah, we're slowly building up the rupees. I, as you might remember, to get bait uh, for a cheap price, we need to go to the blue ring store, which is um, at the extreme northern east side of the world. Uh, okay, I got 60 rupees, finally. That took way longer than it needed to be, but... Uh, Apparently the, the enemies that are supposed to drop a lot of rupees did not drop rupees at all. The Tektites were being jerks. Now watch, they're going to drop a lot of them now. Yeah, of course. Alright, so let's get the base and just be out of here. Blip, 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 blip. All right, so now we're just gonna make our way to level uh, eight. Um, to get into level eight, um, there's one hint that you actually can get in level six about it, and it says something about that south from the arrow lies a secret and. Well, the arrow is basically where we got the magical sword. And the screen that's south from that is um, where there's water and falling rocks. And it's actually kind of creative how you actually go into it. And Well, I'll just say right now, you have to go west from here, like one screen. And you have to bomb a wall and then use the step ladder to get in. Except that I'm not really sure what what part to bomb, so this might take a little second. Okay, here we go. Alright, so I guess I'll end up the part here as I'm avoiding boulders. So uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part when we will go into level 8. See you guys later.